Okay, we're back live. Las Vegas, California, SiliconAngle.tv, theCUBE, our flagship telecast. We go out to the events uh, and talk to the, the people, the thought leaders, the CEOs, the entrepreneurs, uh, the executives, the marketing folks, developers, engineers, anyone we can find and extract a signal from the noise, uh, all available on SiliconAngle.tv or YouTube.com slash SiliconAngle. That's our channel on YouTube. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. This is our day two wrap up, and joining me in this segment of wrap up is Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org, and Stu Miniman, analyst at uh, Wikibon. Guys, uh, great day. Yeah, you know, I mean, some good yeah, guests. HP Discover, we, you What did you think, guys? So I think, you know, to me, it's uh, two days here. I was here yesterday. Um, it's the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good is, I think HP's refocusing on the enterprise, which is really where it belongs. Um, and, and I like that messaging from Meg. I think that's their strong suit. Yes, it's got these other you know, divisions, so there's a printing division and all kinds of other cool stuff, but really the enterprise is the core. It's where HP, most of the customers here are really in the enterprise. So that, you know, that's the good, I like that. You know, the, the bad to me is you know, HP's in a turnaround situation. You know, Meg Whitman comes in, she's only eight months into the job, second CEO in you know, a couple years. It's you know, not a great situation at the top, and she's even said it's going to take you know, three to five years yeah, to turn I mean, this thing around. So, so that's you know that's the bad. And then to me, the ugly is there's still a lot of dissonance. I mean, here about HP's cloud strategy. They're talking one side's talking OpenStack, the other side's talking you know invented here. I mean, there's there's still some inconsistency there. But on balance, it's HP. And yeah, I, I mean, that, I agree. I mean, I agree. Know. I love HP. I mean, I love HP. It's. Uh, one of the exciting shows to go to because the conversation range is is is, is yeah. very good. I mean, got, we can talk about, and they have a lot of smart people here. We talk about anything. We had the printer guys in, which is exciting. But I think you're right on. I think Meg Whitman is clearly playing the I don't want to be Gil Emilio, which uh, for the folks who don't know, <laughs> who aren't old enough to remember, he was the one uh, who was in charge of Apple and had a, he went out to the press said I have a hundred day plan and and it killed him because in hundred days nothing changed. So you know, Meg is a little bit more conservative. I think she's laying down four to five years as a turnover. I think that is too short. I think she's just trying to not get caught into that statement and she's messaging and she's very well scripted. She's only talking to press that are asking very basic questions. Um, she's not feeding the press much. Um, she's not really having any candid conversations around what her plans are. So obviously very well scripted, setting the expectation four to five years. Uh, to me, I still think that's uh, too long. Uh, but I think, yes, she, I think she will turn this thing around because that's, that's kind of a good conservative sign um, for I her. I think so too, and, I think you're and, right on. And uh, so that was, that was cool. Yeah. And I think there, the marketing challenge continues at HP and they have so much to talk about in, in such a short forum in terms of time frame with this event. And, and it feels to me like it's like everyone wants to have their hand in something. So you have a slew of announcements, at least it's not that many than as last year, but there's always, there's just, just messaging is just not tied together. And uh, you know, in the cloud in particular, I just see just some, some incoherent messaging around what they're really trying to say. Um, but if I had to kind of pick kind of a, a sentiment, Dave, I'd say clearly uh, the, the uh, Converge Cloud is, is coming across louder than anything, and that's you know, and that is we're doing it. We're with customers. We're servicing it. So um, that I think of is, is risen up above the noise. But there's still some other noise in there, like the public cloud stuff. I know Bree Singh is doing some great work there, but it's really a developer-focused uh, environment with OpenStack, and I applaud that efforts. Um, but really, there's not much there I can get my arms around. Um, and all the other stuff seems just peripheral and kind of thrown in there. Yeah, John, if I, I could say, you know, Dave Donatelli, I've been watching him do keynotes for over a decade now, and he's very good at what I call the justify the portfolio presentation. There's a lot of things out there, a lot of different pieces, and, and as, as Dave pointed out, there, there's a lot of, you know, change going on in HP. I think we've seen, you know, a, a, a solidification of the storage message for HP. You know, it's very clear. You know, three par and store once, you know, are, are out there pretty strong. Three par is doing well in the market. It's now HP's, you know, number one selling storage product that they have. And, and store once, they believe they have uh, some arrows in the in the quiver to be able to go after data domain. Cloud is early days. You know, it's everybody's trying to figure out, you know, which solution it has. HP's, you know, very disparate all the different pieces. And I, I well, think it's early. Day, it's early days, but you know Oracle's out with their announcement today. Obviously, we have to we talk about that uh, in a minute. But they have to show leadership, yeah. and you know customers want leadership. And I think you know you mentioned storage, and storage is at the center of all the action that we cover and around cloud. And I think clearly HP is jumping on the big data train, and they have to. And that's it's a really important message that we're seeing here. It's great to see that big data messaging come in. But uh, we were talking uh, on one of the breaks, Dave, about you know the autonomy and 
and I think autonomy, and, well, I don't think, I know they have some good technology, but with all the de uh, debacle with the management team at, at autonomy leaving, it's, it's, it's interesting to me that I'm seeing an excitement amongst the different groups yeah. of integrating autonomy. So we were talking, is it because they paid just a big price for it, or is yeah, that yeah. legit? I mean, the printer guy's saying we've got autonomy announcement, so it is really going through the organization. What's your so, angle so on if that? So if I may, if I just kind of close a thought on cloud, if I can, because last November, um, no, year, two years ago, November, at the analyst meeting, uh, Leo talked about cloud, and that they were going to do a public cloud. And then last summer, at HP Discover, we heard that they were going to do cloud. And remember we said, what are they doing? We had no clue what they were doing. This year, at least it's clear right. what they're doing. They have an offering, they're, they're selling stuff. And they have multiple you know, offerings. And they have multiple offerings, right. And it's not just sort of private, you know, blah, blah, blah. it's a real public cloud, so that's goodness. Um, I think it's got a lot of long way to go, it's got to mature. On the issue of autonomy, you're absolutely right, John. I'm, I'm sitting there wondering to myself, is this stuff real or is it just marching orders because we paid $11 billion for it? And in speaking to Pauline Nist off camera, and I really have a lot of respect for her, she shared with me some of the capabilities of autonomy that I wasn't aware of. So I think there's, there's some value there. I think that it's starting to make sense to me why. They got to rope that in. It, it, it makes sense to me why they purchased autonomy. I'm not sure I understand why they paid $11 billion for them. But well, there I think they had real There was the breakup there. clause that was just really so huge. I just think they bit the bullet. But what you know, and there's two ways that can go. You swallow it in, and you kind of absorb it, and it kind of floats around. But this genuine, genuine excitement. I mean, I think the shining light to me was the printer conversations. Believe it or not, because the printer conversations really have to become an enterprise solution. They're going that way. But auto the autonomy component actually enables them to do that around information governance and adding that as a gateway to the cloud. If they can pull that off. That's exciting, but other groups we've heard the same thing. There's a lot of autonomy integration going on across all the groups. Yeah, so um, again, you're talking about converged infrastructure, Stu. Um, I want to talk about that because it's, it's hard for me not being an expert in that space to really squint through the offerings. HP, I heard a couple things from HP which intrigued me. They said they were first. Yeah. Is, is that true in so, your mind? So, so, so yeah, let me walk through this real quick. So if you look in, from a messaging standpoint, absolutely. Um, you know, HP, you know, very much a leader in the blade server market space uh, and pulling together the compute and the storage, they've pulled that together. Um, what's a little bit vexing for me is if you say, okay, what is HP's converged infrastructure offering? You know, they don't have a single V block. They've got cloud system and virtual system and app systems and other ways to get into convergence. So, you know, when we talked to Dave Donatella yesterday and said, you know, how do I measure how successful you are in converged infrastructure? He said, well, he we said, well it out. we've got server, network, and storage. I said, right, but I don't know what percentage of that. Uh, so are you saying they don't, they, I mean, they do sell a single SKU, what's they, it's they, called? They, they do, it's, it's the cloud it's system. The cloud system, right? but you're, you're, you're saying they don't break that out. How successful it. that is, is, well, you know, we, we have we, anecdotal Anecdotally, data. we've heard it's not being uh, in, in, adopted in, broadly, in, although we heard today, to, no, yesterday that there is some uptake. So, so what we always look at is the converged infrastructure is the uh, kind of the tip of the spear. You go in there and you pitch this as the vision of where you need to go. But uh, you know, upgrade cycles, budgets, and silos make it very difficult. So customers instead are saying, I might not be able to you know go full in on this you know kind of block today, but I can start positioning myself for that. Even when we look at like VCE, it's you position converged infrastructure and then you start building some of the pieces. So you say, okay, but for, from HP's standpoint, you know, I go in with three par now, and then I upgrade to gen eight, uh, you know, uh, uh, when I have a chance, and eventually I've built some of the pieces, but it, it fits into what our bucket would be, the reference architecture, more than the single SKU. And, so. I, and I, heard, I heard somebody said that D block doesn't scale. Um, that surprised me. I mean, yeah, so, so I, I, you know, V block does scale. <laughs> okay, you so, know, so. <laughs> uh, all right, so fine, and then, now let's talk about Gen 8. Now Gen 8 I think is a real bright spot in the portfolio. We had uh, uh, Jim Gontier on. John, I'm sure you were disappointed you couldn't be here. He's always a great interview. Yeah, I love Jim. Uh, we asked him about Gen 8, uh, you know, what was known as Project Voyager, what's the uptake been, he lit up. You know, uh, you, were, you were on that interview. Yeah. A lot of uptake there. Um, you know, really solving that IT labor problem that we've been talking about. Really the mundane management task, all those things and all the clicks you got to do to get a system up and running. HP's really attacking that problem, as is IBM, by the way. I mean, I think HP and IBM have a lot to lose if they don't attack that problem. Did he talk about the ARM-based arm, arm -based stuff at all? Because yes, he we've did. been hearing a lot about yep. not, a, not a lot of availability for benchmarking. 
He uh, did. Those units. Um, they, what's the uptake on the arm? So, you know, remember, I mean, that's sort of in, in concept disruptive to his business. And so I think right <laughs> now, so I think, actually, um, I think his response to me confirmed what we heard about not a lot of uptake on that because he didn't seem at all paranoid about that. He was actually very complimentary. It was innovative. This is what we did. Um, it was almost too good. Yeah. That product almost, the moonshot stuff was almost too good. So I think that, I think we, we're seeing a lot of talk about that. We're seeing adoption at Dell. I mean, so we're seeing the OEMs Dell actually has the start to, the copper to do that solution. Stuff. So, you know, um, Dell's obviously coming out with their moonshot version of, of, of ARM based uh, servers with copper. So, you know, that's disruptive. Either way, the market will be disruptive. Yeah, the question it, is, it do when? you disrupt yourself and take that motor and, and series? How long is it going to take? Pauline Nissa is going to take five years, you know, within five years. So, you know, Intel's got a lot to lose there, so she's admitting that. Um, okay. The other thing that, that we, now I want to have this conversation because I think this is really important, and we didn't get, in my opinion, uh, and I'm not surprised, a, a good answer from HP, but we asked them, how do you essentially balance, you know, going after market share, you know, we're not going to lose on price. I asked that question several times. I asked Donatelli and I asked uh, Jim Gante. How do you balance that with chasing profits? And, um, and basically Donatelli said, you know, you got to balance both. First of all, we don't bomb pricing. We don't always just, you know, we don't just take uh, a deal for any price. Um, we balance it. Now, in the marketplace, you see companies like EMC, for example, they will get very aggressive on price to maintain that footprint. And then they will sell a boatload of software and services behind that. They'll sell solutions and services and softwares like bananas in bunches. And I think they perfected that model. And I don't know why other companies aren't as good at it, but they're not. Stu, you used to work there, yep. so maybe you have some insights on this. Yeah, I mean, wrapping a bow on the kind of the converged infrastructure discussion, services are such a critical piece of it. And, you know, we, we talked to HP a little bit about what, you know, the latest with VCE and with IBM's recent announcement and where we see some of the kind of next generation architectures coming. Um, and the two pieces that we need to make these solutions, you know, really hum from a customer standpoint, from, uh, you know, helping that management, uh, you know, and operational challenges that we have today are the services to help customers do this and, and the software. Uh, and, you know, I don't think we've had too many deep discussions on, on theCUBE about, you know, it's, it's the, you know, HP's got IMC and they've got other tools. They're tying in with vCenter and Microsoft, but it, it's, it's that software layer that is really going to be the differentiator. Guys, let's talk about, uh, here, wrapping up day two, let's get a little philosophical about, um, because it's theCUBE, we want to mix it up a bit. Let's talk about HP's uh, challenges. Where do they need to really work on things? Because um, they do have a lot of good things going on. I'm going to say HP, I'm bullish on HP. I think it's a, it's a stock as a long, buy that long. I think, they're gonna, I think they will successfully turn it around. But what do they need to work on? Obviously, my, my you know, I mentioned marketing. I, you know, I think acquisitions, they could have bought Cloudera, but so they, they would disagree with that. But they, my number think? one is software strategy. I mean, I just think state HP software strategy on balance is deficient. I mean, HP is the largest computer company in the world, and it's, I think, the number five or number six software company in the world. I mean, to me, that's deplorable. If Meg Wickman, your number one priority should be to really increase the software content at HP. Now she said, we're not trying to become a software company. Okay, fine, don't have to become a software company. I don't really care, but I think you really need a more coherent, more compelling software strategy. Why? Because it adds so much value, it's how you differentiate, uh, especially when you don't own a hypervisor, and I think it drives you know, profitability and margins, and it, it's sticky, it allows you to sell other services and more hardware, and it really is the key differentiator. Well, so that to me is well, number one. Well, we Dave, heard Dave, that, hold on, hold on, I'll make a point, because I want to get Dave's comment on this. So we've heard this before about HP being viewed as a very tactical vendor. Uh, they're a supplier, but they're, not, they're being viewed as tactical, but not so much strategic. So are you saying that software will make them more strategic or more sticky? Can you explain that's that? A, that's a really good point, and yes, I am saying that, and I just saying feel like- so Sticky that, or that, uh, that it, strategic? That, that sticky and strategic to me are, are they go hand in hand in glove. So I think that you know the autonomy acquisition was very clearly an effort to increase the software content, but it was you know I think it was somewhat misguided uh, by Leo on, on the price. That's fine. So they have autonomy. Autonomy is a great asset, and it looks like they're they're leveraging that. But you know uh, there's so much more in software around middleware and tools and database and applications and infrastructure management. You know, HP software and around infrastructure management pretty good, I think they do a good job there. Yes. But I think they do really have to identify some other opportunities. To me, the number one opportunity there is big data. 
I mean, I think HP really has to get smart about its big data, software portfolio, Vertica, another great asset there, so I really think it has to continue down that track. Um, yes, I hear Meg saying we don't, we don't want to become, a, we don't, we're not trying to become a software company, fine, but I, I, I'd like to see them be more aggressive there. Yeah. What do you think? So, so Dave, uh, absolutely, uh, you know, I heard some good, good messages from HP, the things like their cloud maps, uh, things like their application aware configurations. Um, we heard Converge Infrastructure looking at things like SAP HANA uh, and uh, Hadoop. So, you know, HP is making progress in some of these spaces. Um, you know, as we said, the, the challenge is they've got so many different components and so many pieces. Um, you, you know, it's tough for people to kind of boil down uh, to, to what's essential for them. Okay, this is day two, that's a wrap up here. We are um, at HP Discover 2012. HP is unifying their message. Um, the overall vibe here is completely different than last year. Um, I think that HP is, has more energy this year. I think, uh, Dave, I think you, know, you made some great points, but I clearly see stark difference between last year. The Leo year was really weird, it was a weird vibe, and everyone was kind of walking on eggshells. Not this year, people got a spring in their step, um, I think they all recognize what they need to do on the marketing side, tighten it up, and I think that's going to get taken care of. But overall, I give them a really positive uh, grade on this, guys, and I think uh, you know th there is a spring in the step here at HP. There's good, great conversations. Um, you're seeing some coherency around across the board. Still a lot of work to do. So we're going to be back here tomorrow at 10 o'clock for more interviews. 10 a.m. Pacific time, we'll be going live day three. This is theCUBE from SiliconAngle.tv. That's a wrap here from HP Discover in Las Vegas, Nevada. For all the interviews, go to siliconangle.com or siliconangle.tv, or if you want to go look at the archives of two years of our CUBE events, go to youtube.com slash siliconangle. And of course, if you want the open source content on wikibon.org, that's the analyst firm with all the free content, go to wikibon.org and use the search function there, type in some keywords, some great data in there, the first ever market study on big data, Go to wikibon.org slash big data, tons of content there, converged networking, David Floyer has got some of the most uh, progressive work around IO uh, and flash and IO architecture and storage and, uh, and big data. So, a lot of great stuff, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>